Welcome, wrestling fans. Welcome to Curtain Jerk, and as always, I'm your host, Jacob Grandi, reporting for the Main Event Marks YouTube channel and the Dragon Suplex Podcasting Network. What a week, what a few weeks it's been in pro wrestling. We're, we're going to talk about my personal experience with AEW Dynamite and AEW Rampage. We're going to be talking about the last WWE Raw of 2021. We're going to be talking about day one of 2022. We're also going to be talking about a little bit of news and notes that I found interesting today. Tony Storm, gone from the WWE. Hate to see her leave, but love to watch her walk away. On her own accord, that is. She asked for her release, and she got it. Um... It's pretty interesting. Her career trajectory, stardom, NXT UK Women's Champion, I believe the first ever NXT UK Women's Champion, if I'm not mistaken. Then she went on to the WWE NXT in America, SmackDown. It just seemed like it was just one after the other, success after success. But then when she hit SmackDown, she hit a plateau. Um, I don't watch too often, but you barely see her on there. You don't really ever hear her mentioned in the news. So I get it. She's like, okay, this is this is my plateau. I've hit it. I've seen what it's like in WWE. It's not for me. I'm going to ask for my release. Britt Baker posting pictures of her. Britt Baker calling her out, if you will, on Twitter. Um, makes me think she's going to AEW. I mean, that's where everyone seems to end up. We'll get into that a little later. Uh, but, I mean, you know, there's also the Deanna Perrazzo effect where you can be an impact, you can be the one number one pushed lady, and in my opinion, Deanna Perrazzo, I would put her as woman of the year, I would put her above Bianca Belair, who kind of stalled out, I would put her above uh, Britt Baker, who didn't have as good of an in-ring as Deanna Perrazzo, and then Thunder Rosa really didn't get the push, so if I'm looking at the North American scene here, I'm looking at Deanna Perrazzo right there, uh, you know, Becky's heel turn kind of stalled her. Uh, Charlotte uh, getting kind of sent home. I don't really know what she's doing now. Uh, kind of uh, hurt her. So, yeah, Deanna Perrazzo took it. And why did she take it? Because she was the number one lady in the company she's with. So maybe if Tony Storm signs with an MLW, a AAA, uh, you know, does the Pac thing and goes back to where she started in stardom, just like Pac kind of went to uh, DDT for a little bit before going into uh, AEW. That might work out better for her, but I don't think that's what's happening. I think she's going to go to AEW. She's going to, you know, appear on AEW. Will she be a Aleister Black, who I feel like has only improved in AEW? Will she be like a Daniel or Brian Danielson, who's had way better matches since he's been? Or will she be like an Andrade or, uh, I don't know, Tony Nice? Barely is even, you know, is showing up in the crowd more often than he's showing up in the ring, it seems like, on Dynamite and Rampage. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And we'll see where she goes. She's definitely very talented. She has a look for pro wrestling. And she's been pushed anywhere she goes except for WWE SmackDown for whatever reason. Someone else who's been a lot of places and hopefully is going to be in the ring in 2022 is x He says he's going to be in ring ready by the start of 2022. And, I mean, come on, guys. I can hear the music. I can see the pyro. He needs to be a wrestle or Royal Rumble entrant. Uh, it would just make sense. You know they put a few nostalgia guys in there every year, and uh, I think they need to put X-Pac in for that nostalgia pop, that Christian Cage pop that he got. That I mean, I don't know if he'll be as big as Edge, but I definitely think he could give maybe Kevin Nash a run for his money a few years ago, or DDT, DDP who did it a few years ago, or even Hurricane or Boogeyman. I think he would definitely squash those pops, and I think it would be awesome to see him come out maybe he can do like a Mick Foley thing get thrown out and come back out as one two three kid and then get thrown out and come back as Thunder Lightning kid who knows but I would be excited to see X-Pac in the Royal Rumble someone else now that we're talking about Royal Rumble someone else that I'd want to see in the Royal Rumble Brian Cage he's not happy with AEW AEW is not happy with him he wants to go to WWE WWE wants him He's already been in WWE. Why not run it back a little bit? Because now he's much bigger in size. Take, you know, he's worked out a lot. He's gotten yoked. Uh, He's uh, a body guy, and they're a body company. And it would be kind of cool 
I'm an AEW fan, but it'd be kind of cool to see someone go from AEW to WWE. I think that would shake up the internet a little bit. Why not start 2022 with some fun? So those are two guys that I'd want to see in the Royal Rumble, X-Pac and Brian Cage. Um, but the a uh, Royal Rumble is a WWE thing. And I went to AEW. I went to Dynamite last week. That's why I've you know been a bit of delay in in Curtain Jerk, and I went to Rampage. A little bit of a review from last week's AEW Dynamite: Orange Cassidy versus Adam Cole. The Adam Cole boom was huge. I'm not gonna break down the matches from worst to first like I usually do. I'm just gonna give you my overall experience as a fan. Because it was a little different from watching it at home. My friend said that the uh, Adam Cole boom scared the bartender. He was out getting drinks for us. And, uh, you know, of course, this bartender is not a particular wrestling fan. That boom startled the hell out of her, which I thought that was funny. And, of course, Kyle O'Reilly came out. He ran right by me. I le was legit marking out. I... He, like before, like where I was sitting, I was uh, like front row of the lower bowl toward the ramp. So he ran by me before he kind of uh, took a turn to jump over the rail. And I stood up and went, oh, shit. Oh, shit. And that's when a few people around me, including, you know, a few people who don't really know what was happening, just knew that that was a big deal by my reaction. And then I just saw the whole place, you know, stood up. They know they, they saw him coming before you kind of saw him on tv and you know the rest is history kyle o'reilly undisputed era is in um aew so i mean if you needed more of uh who won the wednesday night war solidified now you have the most popular faction that was on the rival company nxt on your brand and now you're going to do the most over faction from 2019 in AEW versus the most over faction in uh nxt in 2019 on 2022 i love it i mean yes AEW has a loaded roster but i'm i'm all for kyle o'reilly joining uh AEW just so we can get the elite versus undisputed era uh it was cool to see Danielson and Hangman a little showdown there, especially when they bring up the judges in the Greensboro Coliseum because that's when uh, Class of Champions 89 happened, I think 88 maybe, where uh, you know they went down to judges with Sting versus Flair. Griff Garrison, a hometown boy, went to school at Guilford College, went to wrestling school at Firestar Pro Wrestling. I, I've been seeing Griff Garrison wrestle for years as people know from this podcast, and here he is going up against Malachi Black, getting his head kicked off in front of his entire family, and they were all wearing Griff shirts in the front row. It was cool to see. Ruby Soho and Nyla Rose. Uh, I saw the fan who had the sign getting kicked out, but he was facing the camera as I was facing the camera, so no one in my section knew what the sign said, but we just saw this one guy. He had a man bun and a Smith shirt grab him, and then a bunch of uh, Michael Nakazawa, uh, you know, cosplayers also kicked him out. And I know he looked at the head of security and said, I would like to know why what I wrote down was so offensive. So I like heard him say that and I was like, dude, he must have had some some immediately I knew that whatever was on that sign was offensive. And, uh, you know, by the. Uh, reaction online uh, everyone agrees with me and they they saw it and everything so it's uh i mean it was what it was he got kicked out it was a packed house they could have kicked out one or two fans it doesn't matter cm punk darby allen and sting versus ftr and mjf this was uh my favorite match i've ever seen live it was the culmination of my wrestling fandom in many ways my biggest the the biggest wrestler for me growing up was sting as a kid teenage years it did shift to seeing punk getting dvds of ring of honor and then seeing him in wwe cw and then 
kind of when I, uh, you know, got done with school and I didn't know what to do with my life, boom, here he was, the pipe bomb, which brought me into kind of the modern era of how I view wrestling. So this was just a very cool moment just to see Sting and, and, and CM Punk team. And it was an amazing match to be there live, to see, you know, MJF being the chicken shit he is, not wanting to tag in when Punk was in. Perfect, perfect match. Going into Rampage, Jungle Boy versus Isaiah Cassidy. Uh, what the hell is going to happen with uh, Private Party? What's going to happen with Joey Janela? What's going to happen with Sonny Kiss? All these guys who signed to AEW uh, at the beginning, who looked like they were going to get pushed at the beginning, but since then have uh, almost gone the way of the Dodo Bird as far as Dynamite and Rampage. They're hardly on. So I'm, you know, I, Isaiah Cassidy, good on you to get on the show. But man, I wonder what's going to happen here. Jungle Boy goes over. Uh, Hook was hella over. Um, you know, in his match, he did no sell the Rikishi bomb or whatever. Who cares? Bear Bronson, uh, he's a great wrestler. He's on AW Dark uh, recently. So who cares what's going to happen with him? I think he's fine. Cody Rhodes, though, was Cena esque. Definitely Cena esque here. Crowd was split down the middle uh booing him cheering him but he seemed to play into the booze more than he played into the cheers as you guys know he when dynamite went off the air he said that he hurt and then he grabbed his heel and said he hurt his heel a little bit and then the they were doing the david crockett uh memorial thing where they you know uh tony khan came out for like the fifth or sixth time i will say this going to aw live you definitely get a sense of Tony's ego a little more than, you know, on Twitter or definitely on the show. He comes out three or four times during commercial breaks, make sure the crowd's still into it. It's kind of cool to see him once. It's okay to see him twice. But by the time Rampage was done, it was like his fifth or sixth time coming out, and it had lost his luster. Uh, I feel like, you know, you're getting a little bit of uh, the boss kind of trying to show off here. A little bit of those kind of vibes. But it was still a really fun show. A lot more fun than going to Raw a few months ago when Big E won the championship for the first time. And I'm going to go again in, in January. So coming up here, I'm going to go back to AEW Dynamite. And uh, it was an amazing, amazing experience. It was an okay experience watching the last Raw of 2021. Of course, this was when COVID ran rampant in WWE. They changed their COVID protocol but I was going to see what they were going to do with it. It seems like a newsworthy and noteworthy Raw because it was the last Raw of 2021, but also it was going to be a, a limited uh, roster. And I enjoyed the hell out of the first hour. I have to say RK Bro and Alpha Academy, first segment here, sign me up. Gable, uh, you know, underrated in the ring, underrated on the mic. Uh, has a master's degree, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but Riddle says he sees himself uh, on a higher education level. I thought that was hilarious. And then goes into the match. Gable versus Riddle. This was amazing, amazing stuff here. Moonsault. Uh, Riddle tries to uh, counter with a triangle, but Gable reverses that. Uh, goes for a German suplex attempt, but uh, Riddle counters that. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, Riddle wins the match, but Otis jumps him. This leads to Otis versus Randy, where the whole story is Otis doesn't have a neck, so Randy can't RKO him. Randy does RKO him. I feel like they could have pushed that to day one, and that could have been the big payoff at day one, but I digress here. That was like a cool storyline here, but they didn't really play into it too much. It was like a one-week build. Randy hits the RKO. Riddle wants a hug from Randy. Randy says no. Uh, we have Reggie and Dana Brooke versus Truth and Tamina. I thought this match was good too. Uh, Reggie ends up rolling up Truth for the 1 2 3. Street Profits, Ray and Dominic. So we're getting a string of good matches here. Uh, I don't see a problem with what we're seeing. Um, people kind of shit on Raw. A lot and right now I was watching this I see a blockbuster doomsday street profits one two three they're going on to face RK bro at the pay-per-view we get three good matches I'm like this is great this is great shit here uh, love the AJ and almost uh, video package kind of hyping up their feud 
Miz and Eric Bischoff talk backstage. AJ promo. Everything's good here. Apollo versus AJ. So fourth good match right in a row. Uh, you know, Battle of Los Angeles 2014. Battle of Los Angeles 2013. You know, that era of Battle of Los Angeles is. These two guys were in. It's cool to see them on WWE Raw. Cross pass again on the bigger stage. AJ gets the victory there. KO versus Cedric Alexander. Kevin Owens gets the victory, but yet again, five great matches. Uh, looks like Big E might have had COVID because he did a, a phone, uh, you know, a selfie promo. Uh, Seth Rollins might have had promo. He did, COVID. He did a selfie promo. Uh, you know, so a limited roster made for more wrestling, and I think that's what WWE needs. I think that's what Raw needs right now. Just going back to basics. Uh, and winning the crowd over with some good wrestling. Uh, Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch video package. This was good. One thing that WWE does better than any other wrestling company in the world is video packages. Dolph Ziggler beat Priest. I would not have uh, bet on that, or uh, I don't agree with that at all. I don't think that Dolph Ziggler should be losing to uh, or beating Damian Priest, who is the U.S. champion. And then we had Eric Bischoff on Raw. Dimples are orange. Suit was white. Giving the vows to Miz and Maurice. But then all of a sudden, Edge comes out. And then uh, the brood music hits. And he stands back. And this liquid dumps on Miz and Maurice. They can't make it look like blood because it's cable TV. So it kind of just ended up looking like diarrhea. So Edge, because he was a member of the Brood literally 20-some years ago, was able to dump diarrhea on Miz and Maurice at the last segment of Raw. It fell flat. It was gross. It was ridiculous. Um, it did not sell me on the pay-per-view. Uh, I'm not. I wasn't into it, and I don't think very many people were into it either. But that goes to show you when they kept it basic and simple and had a lot of good wrestling matches like Gable versus Riddle. Otis versus Randy, uh, Kevin Owens, Owens versus Cedric Alexander, AJ and Apollo. It was great. It's good stuff. When they do video packages with Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch, it was great. But when they try to do this, uh, you know, rehash of the Attitude Era, uh, but you can't really do it because you're trying to also not be as edgy as you were in the Attitude Era, it ends up looking like shit. Literally looking like shit. Uh, it looked like, yeah, he just dumped like sewage waste on someone who's wrestling because of a gimmick from 20 years ago but the gimmick from 20 years ago was that Gangrel dumped blood this is a it's far off it missed the mark but hopefully day one doesn't miss the mark I'm going to be going over my predictions for the show Drew McIntyre versus Madcap Moss uh, I'm thinking Corbin is going to interfere and Madcap Moss is going to get the victory. I like Moss. I'm glad that he's still uh, floating around the WWE. Edge versus Miz. I mean, you don't dump diarrhea on somebody. He's got to get his win back. He's got to get his heat back. I'm thinking the Miz wins this one. Raw Tag Team Championships. RK Bro versus the Street Profits. There's no way they're taking the title off of RK Bro this early. I think it's going to be something at the Rumble that sets up their Mania match. Riddle and Randy if they're still pushing that they might have such good chemistry they're going to push that to, into Mania uh, I think it would be the second Mania in a row where RK Bro is uh, solidified as a tag team the Raw Women's Championship match Becky Lynch versus Liv Morgan um, why not put the title on Liv Morgan she seems to be hot right now uh, you know, Becky Lynch really doesn't need the title. Put it on Liv, shine her up a little bit, only to take it off of her going into Rumble. Maybe you could do a Becky Lynch versus Liv Morgan in the Rumble, or right, for a Rumble match. Uh, you know, not a Rumble match, but the, a, a match that's on the Rumble show that's not the Royal Rumble ladies match is what I'm trying to say here, guys. SmackDown Tag Team Championship. The Usos versus The New Day. Keep it on The Usos. They're with Roman. Roman's the hottest shit ever. You gotta keep it on The Usos. With that being said, 2021 was the year of Roman Reigns. On SmackDown, is 2022 the year of Brock Lesnar on SmackDown? Um, I think it is. I think Heyman got fired, 
and this is when Heyman gets his revenge is on day one. That's going to heat this matchup going into WrestleMania. Heyman is going to cheat and have Brock Lesnar, this face Brock Lesnar, is going to be a heel Brock Lesnar, and the heel Roman Reigns, who already gets cheered anyways, will be the face Roman Reigns. And uh, he's going to... This is just going to set up a Mania match, in my opinion, but Brock is going to win the Universal Championship. The WWE Championship, Big E versus Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens versus Bobby Lashley. Is this designed to take the title off of Big E? I think it is. Is it designed to take the title off of Big E without having uh, him lose? I think it is. And I think they're putting the title on Seth freaking Rollins. Uh, Kevin Owens, uh, you know, he re-signed a contract, which got him in the match. But I don't think it's a big, you know, I don't think they still see him as, you know, that star to hold the title. Um, I just don't see it. So I'm going with Seth freaking Rollins. Uh, and that's, you know, my day one predictions. But we did have a AEW Dynamite from tonight. And I'm going to break it down and give you every match from worst to first. But before I do that, I'm going to go into a little bit of my overall thoughts and what happened outside of the ring. Uh, JR was back. That's cool. Last Dynamite on TNT. Truly the end of an era. I like it on TNT, just like Nitro. It going to the Mothership TBS, as Excalibur said a lot. Uh, kind of just reminds me of uh, Superstars. And Superstars was just like kind of the lamer show. Or even uh, Thunder. You know, I liked it on TNT because that's where Nitro was on. But, you know, who cares? It's going to another network, and I just, you know, I can find it easily. I don't mind Dynamite switching channels at all. Uh, Garcia hitting Santana with the ring bell and Jericho coming out was pretty good. I wonder where this is going. I think, you know, Kingston and Jericho are going to be friends for a little while, and then maybe uh, Santana and Ortiz split from Jericho, attack Jericho, and join Kingston. Uh, maybe something like that happens. I'm not sure. MJF, first of many promos or talking segments of the evening, uh, he kind of uh, reveals that he gets a cut of Wardlow's merch money or uh, you know, a, a big portion of it. That was kind of rough. Uh, Warlow getting increasingly pissed at him. MJF uh, not really paying attention or being aware of it. Uh, Christian Cage challenges the Lucha Brothers uh, for Jurassic Express. I thought that was kind of cool. I thought it was just going to be um, Jungle Boy and Lucha and Christian Cage and Luchasaurus would be just on the outside for the tag titles. But I mean, I guess it's Jurassic Express. Maybe that just kind of telegraphs that they're not going to win. I don't know. Uh, the U Undisputed Era and uh, the Elite were in the back trying to cut a promo as a faction, but the tension was building a little bit. Dan Lambert back in the ring. Um, Brandy ends up coming out after she gets called a stripper uh, by Lambert and uh, the men of the year. Uh, she comes out full of piss and vinegar, says that uh, Dan Lambert is just a less talented Paul Heyman. I thought that was funny. And... Dan Lambert says he has a black belt, and she says, uh, you may have a black belt, but I'm a black bitch, and they just kind of go at it here. Uh, Dustin Rhodes comes out, uh, insane, insane segment. I enjoyed it. When they show Dan Lambert, I'm like, oh, I'm tired of this, and then he starts talking, he delivers these zingers, and I get hooked, and uh, men of the year, they're great wrestlers, so it's going to go to a good match, and no matter what, you know that as well. And then Brandy coming out, icing on the cake here, cutting a crazy promo, uh, getting into it. She's had a lot of good promos, and I think solely all those promos were in Daly's place. So here she is. You know, this is her home court, it feels like. Uh, Hangman and Danielson video package was really good. Um, I know I just said that WWE does video packages uh, better than anyone in the industry, but every time I see these big hype video packages for AW Dynamite, I have to think about it a little bit. I'm like, is AW Dynamite better? But no, I will give the edge to WWE still, but these these video packages, this one and one later on, were really good. Um, Mercedes Martinez comes out. Uh, you know, she's the debut this week. She does team up with Smart Mark Sterling and Jay, which is kind of interesting. Ruby Soho had seen enough and chased them off. I guess that telegraphs who's going to win that match for later on in the evening. Uh, Rio versus Britt Baker video package. That was another solid one. And I put out a poll. I had to ask the community 
is AEW better or is WWE better? AEW was winning, but I'd have to disagree with my fans there. Punk comes out first time in Daily Place, shouts out JR, shouts out Brody Lee, and says that MJF says he was done with him. Um, and he said that he laced up his wrestling boots and MJF laced up his running shoes, which I thought that was a pretty solid line, being a runner and everything. And uh, I guess seeing Punk and MJF are done from what MJF says at this moment. Uh, but he, Punk says he wants to like kind of interrupt MJF's quest for gold and all that stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't think this feud's over. And if it would be, that's a that's a bummer. But I don't think it will be. I think there's you know Warlow's going to get involved. Something else is going to happen to uh, thicken this plot uh, in the coming weeks. Stark's promo with Hobbs. It was pretty good, but lots and lots of talking here. Uh, Sammy Guevara back with the cue cards. Sheeta promo. Going into a Pillman promo with Alice or, or Malachi Black showing up and then disappearing. The only guy that didn't talk on the show, Malachi Black. The Acclaim promo. Darby and Sting uh, promo. You know, lots of promos. I guess it was kind of like a end of the year TNT wrap up show. And then we get a bunny. And Penelope Ford versus Ty Conti on a J video package. That was good as well. All these video packages are pretty good, but I still don't put WWE above it. I just, the way they can just take, you know, a bunch of nothing and turn it into something awesome. I'm pretty excited about this Edge and Miz video package, despite uh, the ridiculous build. The promos were great in that build, but, uh, you know, the diarrhea spilling on Edge was kind of. Kind of killed the whole thing for me. But going into AW Dynamite from, uh, you know, 12, 29, 21, the last Dynamite of 2021, the worst match out of five matches, Wardlow versus De Colin Delaney. It was cool to see Colin Delaney from WWE, CW, and AIW fame, uh, but he just got Powerbomb. Powerbomb City or Powerbomb Symphony, however you would say it, depending on the promotion. Uh, Spears on the outside, the only one in Daly's place is not liking it. One, two, three, Warlow gets the victory. And then I would have to go with the six man tag um, 2.0 and Garcia versus Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz. Um, Kingston wants Garcia, 2.0 rolls up Santana, just like Garcia rolled up Kingston a few weeks ago, and they attack him after the bell um, with the bell, and that's when Jericho comes out. I think this was just to set up Jericho coming out at the end and a roll of victory, cheap little victory, uh, you know. And it also happened after the 10-man tag. So we got a 6-man tag after a 10-man tag. And the 10-man tag was pretty good. I ranked that uh, number 3 out of 5. Jurassic Express and Cage teaming with the Lucha Brothers, FTR, Matt Hardy, and Private Party. Loaded ring in there. Uh, good stuff here, good match. Build to the dives nicely. Um, it was about five minutes into the match before we saw anyone dive, and I think that got the crowd really hyped on that. But Pinta and Christian kind of bickering at each other. That leads to the big rig by FTR, one, two, three. And that's what led er later on in the evening where Cage was pissed and challenged uh, the Lucha Brothers to a tag match for Jurassic Express. We'll see how that goes. Um, I mean, Lucha Brothers, everything they touch turns to gold. Jungle Boys got the cool entrance, and then they got the big man, uh, Luchasaurus. So I think that match is a can't miss. It's going to be at least entertaining. Um, number two out of five, though, Jade Cargill versus Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa diving on Sterling to kick things off. Uh, Jade in control. Rosa goes after the leg. Uh, Sterling, you know, starts bickering with, with the ref. And this masked person hits Rosa as the ref was distracted. One, two, three. Jay Cargill wins. That person is Mercedes Martinez. Um, you know, we got Kyle O'Reilly last week. We get Mercedes Martinez this week. Is this roster getting too um, big? I don't know. I mean, I don't mind not seeing people on every week. It keeps them fresh. I know that's cliche to say at this point, but I do think it's true. Um, Lots of video package, lots of ways you can utilize guys without having them in the ring and in the arena uh, every week. But with that being said, it might be too much at this point. But, I mean, this main event was a 
perfect example of that might not be true. I mean, I think that that's where my uh, knee jerk reaction goes, where this this roster is too bloated. But then we got undisputed era coming out. Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish. Um, of course, you know they came into. AW this year and this match was the best match on the card versus best friends in Orange Cassidy Cole uh, Super kicks Cassidy when Cassidy wasn't the legal man that got some heat all hell breaks loose Cassidy tags back in Red Dragon double team him Chuck Taylor dives off the stage onto Red Dragon Trent with a spear uh, to Cole on the ramp gets him back in the ring DDT off the top row from Cassidy. I thought it was over at this point. One, two, Cole kicks out. Chuck Taylor hits a pile driver to Cole. Trimperetta hits a pile driver to Cole. Beach break. I thought it was over at this point. One, two, Red Dragon breaks it up. Uh, soul food half and half suplex combo. Nothing could get through to these guys. Undisputed era looked unstoppable until Cutler and the Young Bucks run out. Um, super kick. Best friends, Red Dragon gets the victory in the melee. Red Dragon, I think, super kicked Adam Cole, and the Young Bucks are using that to pull Adam Cole onto like their side of this tension building. Um, it was the best two matches did involve interference, and there was just a squash match and then some mixed or uh, multi man tags. So, I, I think that they were kind of setting up for the Battle of the Belts more so than this New Year's Smash show. They call it New Year's Smash. It's in their hometown of you know Jacksonville, Florida. But um, I would say, I mean, I like last week's better. I was there, but even I don't. Even if I wasn't in the arena last week, I think I still would have liked last week's better. Um, but what can you do? It's the end of the year. They're wrapping up on TNT. They want that TBS Battle of the Belts special to be big, and I think it is going to be big. Uh, Brian Danielson and uh, Adam Page. That match is going to deliver. Rio versus Britt Baker is going to be good. And, I mean, that ladies' tag match is going to be awesome, too. Let me know what you guys think about this show in the comments below. Fly high. I'm out.